In the sun-scorched cliffs above the Dead Sea, a secret lay buried for 2,000 years. In 1947, a young shepherd looking for a lost goat threw a stone into a cave and heard pottery shatter. He had stumbled upon the Dead Sea Scrolls, a library of ancient texts that would change history. For over 70 years, one question has haunted experts. Who wrote them? Scholars argued, theories clashed, but the answer remained lost in the dust. What if the biggest clue was not in the ancient ink, but hidden in the very parchment the scrolls were written on? What if the DNA of the long-dead animals used to make these scrolls held the final secret to their origins? The discovery was a sensation. Word spread quickly, and a race between archaeologists and local Bedouins to explore the caves around a place called Qumran. What they found was beyond belief. In 11 different caves, they uncovered a treasure trove of ancient texts. The scrolls were carefully placed inside large clay jars, and some were wrapped in linen cloth for protection. This ancient library contained parts of every book of the Hebrew Bible, except for the Book of Esther. One of the first scrolls found was a complete copy of the Book of Isaiah. It was a massive scroll, 24 feet long and perfectly preserved. But there was more than just the Bible. The caves held a collection of writings that opened a window into a lost world. There were previously unknown psalms and prayers, rule books for a religious community, calendars, and writings about a final great war between good and evil. Most were written in Hebrew, but some were in Aramaic, the language spoken in the region at the time of Jesus, and a few were even in Greek. These texts were a time capsule from a critical moment in history, the Second Temple Period, from about the 3rd century BC to the 1st century AD. This was the era when modern Judaism was forming and Christianity was born. The scrolls offered a direct look into the beliefs of people who lived 2,000 years ago. But the discovery was also a huge problem. The library was in pieces. Imagine trying to solve a jigsaw puzzle with 25,000 pieces, with most of the pieces missing and no picture on the box to guide you. Some fragments were no bigger than a postage stamp. Putting them together was a massive challenge. If you connect the wrong pieces, the meaning of the entire text could change. This shattered puzzle led to the biggest mystery of all. Who were the people who created this incredible library, and what were they doing in this empty desert? For decades, almost everyone agreed on one answer. Just a short walk from the caves, archaeologists found the ruins of an ancient settlement called Kerbet Qumran. The ruins showed a community that lived and worked together. There were large rooms for meetings and meals, a pottery workshop, and a complex system of channels and pools to collect and store precious water. They even found two ink wells, suggesting that this was a place where scribes worked, copying manuscripts. This evidence pointed to a mysterious Jewish group known as the Essenes. Ancient writers like the historian Josephus described the Essenes as a deeply religious group who had left the busy cities to live a simple, pure life in the desert. They shared all their property and followed strict rules. They believed the temple in Jerusalem had become corrupt, so they went into the wilderness to prepare for the end of days. The theory seemed to fit perfectly. The Essenes lived at Qumran. They spent their lives studying and copying sacred texts. The scrolls were their library. And when the Roman army marched through Judea in the year 68 AD, the Essenes hid their precious library in the nearby caves for safekeeping before their community was destroyed. This became the main story, the Qumran Essene theory. But not everyone was convinced. The scrolls themselves held clues that something was not quite right. The library was just too diverse. It contained so many different kinds of texts and ideas. Could one small isolated group have written or collected them all? Some scholars suggested a different story. Maybe the scrolls were not from Qumran at all. Maybe they were the hidden libraries of many different groups from Jerusalem, rushed out to the desert to save them from the approaching Roman army. The debate went on for years, a mystery with no clear solution. Scholars studied the handwriting and the words, but the puzzle remained. They were looking for clues in the ink, but the biggest secret was hidden somewhere else. The answer to this 70-year-old mystery was not written on the scrolls. It was part of the scrolls themselves. Most of the manuscripts were written on parchment, which is a special kind of material made from animal skin. For scientists, this was the key. Every piece of that ancient skin, no matter how small, 
holds a ghost of the animal it came from. It holds the animal's DNA. DNA is like a recipe book for every living thing. It is unique to each animal. This meant that if scientists could read the DNA from the scroll, they could solve the puzzle in a whole new way. But getting DNA from something that is 2,000 years old is incredibly hard. Ancient DNA is not like the DNA in our bodies today. It is extremely fragile. Over thousands of years, heat and time have broken it into millions of tiny, damaged pieces. It is also mixed with other DNA. There is DNA from bacteria that lived on the scrolls, and the DNA from every person who has touched them over the past 70 years. Finding the original animal DNA is like trying to find a new specific grain of sand on a giant beach. To do this, scientists had to become high-tech detectives. They worked in special super-clean labs, wearing full body suits to avoid adding any more of their own DNA. To protect the priceless scrolls, they could not just cut off a piece. Instead, they carefully collected tiny bits of material, sometimes just dust that had fallen off the back of a fragment. Using powerful new technology, they could take this tiny amount of scroll dust and find the ancient DNA inside. They could then read its genetic code, creating a DNA fingerprint for the animal whose skin was used to make the scroll. The idea was brilliant. If two fragments had DNA from the exact same sheep, they probably came from the same scroll. If they came from closely related sheep, like from the same flock, they were likely connected. But if they came from very different animals, or a completely different species, they could not belong together. For the first time, science had a tool that could sort the 25,000 pieces of this ancient puzzle. The first thing scientists did was figure out what animals the scrolls were made from. The answer brought the first huge surprise. Almost all the scrolls they tested were made from sheepskin, but two fragments, both from the book of Jeremiah, were different. They were made from cowhide. This might not sound exciting, but for archaeologists, it was a bombshell. The desert around Qumran is a dry, harsh place. It is perfect for raising sheep and goats, which do not need much water. But it is a terrible place for cows. Cows need lots of green grass and water to survive. There is no evidence that cows were ever raised at Qumran. This was the first piece of hard physical proof that these scrolls were not made by an isolated community in the desert. They must have been written somewhere else, in a place where cows could be raised and then brought to the caves at Qumran. The idea of a completely separate community writing all its own books was starting to fall apart. The next clue came from a special religious text called the Songs of the Sabbath Sacrifice. This was a popular work. Copies were found in the caves at Qumran, but another copy was discovered 50 kilometers away at the famous mountain fortress of Masada. For years, people wondered if a member of the Qumran group had traveled to Masada and brought the scroll with them. The DNA told a different story. The copies of the songs found at Qumran were all made from the skins of sheep that were genetically very similar. This suggests they were all made locally, from the same flock, but the copy found at Masada was made from skin of a genetically different sheep. This meant the people at Masada did not get their scroll from Qumran. They made their own copy of the text. This important religious work was not the secret property of one group. It was being shared, read, and copied by different Jewish communities all over the land of Judea. The DNA detectives had one more job. Many of the scroll fragments were not found by archaeologists in the caves. They were bought from dealers who had gotten them from the Bedouins. Because of this, it was hard to know for sure if they all really came from the Qumran caves. One fragment had always seemed like an odd one out. It was not a religious text like the others. It was a legal document, a note about a financial debt. Its handwriting also looked different. The DNA test confirmed the suspicions. The sheepskin from this document did not match the DNA from the main group of Qumran scrolls. It was a genetic outlier. This proved that the fragment was likely found at a different site in the desert and was later mixed in with the Qumran collection by mistake. The DNA was cleaning up the historical record, identifying the imposters that did not belong. This genetic detective work has completely changed our understanding of the Dead Sea Scrolls. For the first time, theories that were debated for decades have been tested with hard scientific evidence, and the evidence tells a new story. The scrolls are not the library of a single isolated group living alone in the desert. 
They are a collection that represents the rich and diverse world of ancient Judaism. Qumran was not just a monastery cut off from the world. It was more like a great library or an intellectual center, a place where texts and ideas from many different places were gathered and studied. Some scrolls were probably written right there at Qumran by local scribes using the skins of their local sheep flocks, but many others were brought in from the outside. The cowhide scrolls of Jeremiah show that texts were traveling from cities and towns into the desert. The DNA also showed that different versions of the same biblical book were being used at the same time. This tells us that 2,000 years ago, people were more focused on the meaning of the text than on every single word being exactly the same. The genetic diversity of the animals tells the story perfectly. The DNA of local sheep, distant sheep, and cows from the city all found their way into the Qumran caves. This variety in the animal skins is a perfect mirror for the variety of ideas and texts found in the scrolls themselves. Thanks to a few tiny pieces of dust and the power of ancient DNA, we now see a much bigger, more connected, and more fascinating world than we ever knew before. The story of the Dead Sea Scrolls is far from over. Each fragment still holds secrets, waiting for the next discovery to bring them to light. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this journey into the past, please give this video a like and share it with other history fans. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss our next story. And as always, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.